2023. So far, this is the only year since 2011 when I have not played a Dean guitar. Now, whilst here in Korea, I took this Jackson Minion Rhodes with me. So this video is just a comparison on my experiences between Jackson guitars and Dean guitars and what it's like going from having many guitars from Dean to having just a few guitars here in South Korea. So let's start off with Jackson first, since I've got it here. Now, this is a Jackson Rhodes Minion that was bought for me as a present from my dad. I love this guitar for what it's done, but I don't love it as a guitar. And I'll explain. So one of the reasons why I love this guitar is because it's been on the multiple thousand mile journey from London to South Korea. I had to unbolt the neck and wrap it up and get it shoved in my suitcase and reassemble it here and it's been really great as a tool and the features which i briefly mentioned on a previous video talking about this jackson it was released about a year ago or something nearly a year ago so one of the cool things about this guitar is that it was a 24 fret guitar that was nice and portable it had humbucker pickups and it had a wooden neck so if you see here we got wood here. So really that's like some of the features that I look for in a guitar these days. Um, the wooden neck, not so much, but it's just a much nicer feel than a gloss neck. Uh, matte necks are okay, but these just feel a lot nicer to me. I also upgraded the pickups and these were done by Patasonic in their workshop. Ian, the man who runs Patasonic, creates really otherworldly, class-leading, artisan quality pickups, which this has. Um, the neck pickup is based on 59 Les Pauls, and this one here is the second prototype that we made for my signature pickup, the EDGs. It also was rewired so that this is the neck volume, and this is the bridge volume, and you've got your three-way switch right here. Now, that's the reasons why I love it for what it does, but now, this is one of the reasons why my thoughts on Jackson guitars has kind of changed over the past year or so since having this guitar and having this being one of the only guitars I play. First off is the size. The Minion does not sit properly no matter what you do. Like, for all of these videos, I've had this horn here, that horn right there, resting on a chair. It's literally just resting on the chair and I'm having to counterbalance it with my arm and kind of do some lifting with my left hand as well so it's not comfortable. If I bring it down here, it's okay, but the guitar slides around way too much. What I miss about the Dean guitars is that the V-shape was a lot more symmetrical and the indentation like this part here was much more relaxing to put on your right leg. And of course, with a V-shape like this, you can't rest it on your right leg, you has to be in between the legs. You have to rest your right leg in here, your right leg has to be in between the spikes. So when it's down here, it's fine, but it just moves around way too much. Even if I put my arm on it, I'm having to like constantly shuffle and move around. And even for all the shorts I've made, it's just been resting on this chair. So that's, um, that's the first thing. The second thing is, Guitar manufacturers really need to stop putting these bloody switches by the bridge. The most frustrating thing in the world when you're trying to play fast black metal. The way I play requires my fingers to be relaxed and extended. Every single time it hits on this volume control here. So really the only solution is to remove it. But even so, I'm sometimes worried about hitting this... Here, I don't even like these design of three-way switches. I think they take up way too much space on the guitar and they don't look as good as the normal kind of Les Paul style uh, small switch things you know, that the Deans have and stuff. So that's one of the big flaws as well when it comes to this guitar. Front access is very nice as well. But I think the most frustrating thing, even after upgrading the tuners, these are locking tuners now, the most frustrating thing about this guitar is that it never wants to stay in tune. And this has been doing it for a whole year plus. It's been more than a year since it's been just going out of tune all the time. Now, for the past month, this has just stayed in D standard tuning and every single time I have to make small adjustments. 
and it's really, really frustrating. And it's one reason why I'm an advocate for Floyd Rose systems, because Floyd Rose systems never go out of tune. Most shows I have played with any of my bands have been with guitars with Floyd Rose systems. I have never needed to tune on stage, ever. No matter what kind of genre it was, no matter how aggressively I was playing, they were rock solid. Like my black Razorback V and the seven string Razorback, they have just been absolutely brilliant. Like you just do a little bit of tweaking, even when you take out the case and you go up to the venue, you have to make like very, very small adjustments on the little fine tuners. That's it. Like you can, there was even one gig where I didn't even tune it. I took out his case. I heard it. It was fine. Perfect. Boom. Straight in. Gig. Boom. Done. Take home. Still in tune. Didn't need to tune it for a month. Perfect. That's just perfect. So a Floyd Rose system would be really good on this guitar. Yeah, that's really my gripes with it, with this guitar. Now, would this be different for other Jacksons? Potentially. But another key reason why I'm not too big on the Jacksons and why I still prefer the Deans is the neck profile. The way I play requires my thumb to be above the neck for certain chords and certain songs that I'm playing. Now, when I'm playing most riffs, it's fine. You know, when you kind of have your thumb up in that U shape, but when you're playing all those 1349 riffs, I still have a part of my hand, it feels like the neck is digging into uh, this part of my thumb, which I do not enjoy. And it's one reason why I don't play this guitar for very long, because I could only play it for so much until it's like, no, I need to stop. And it's also one of the reasons why I've moved over to the Donna for a lot of my videos, because that is a much nicer playing guitar than this even though the shape is awful. I don't really like no more Strat shapes, but again, that's a personal thing. Going back to Dean Guitars. Now, Dean as a company is troubled at the moment. So the date of filming right now is the 18th of February, and normally Dean Guitars release their product catalog for the year within the first two months. Now, we are already halfway through February. Dean really should make an announcement uh, by the time this video is released, it's probably going to be March. If they have released a product catalogue, great. If not, then it's going to be even more worrying. Because Dean still, in my opinion, make the best playing guitars on the planet. There has been no other guitar that I've played which has compared to the comfort and playability of a Dean. No guitar that has sat as well. No guitar that has stayed in tune as well. And they, for me, are the best guitars, nothing has really compared. Even some really, really cool, expensive handmade guitars, like my friend has a Mayonnaise. It. it is beautiful, it sounds great, but there's just something about it that doesn't feel as good as my Razorback or any of my other Deans. But again, it's just a personal thing. Guitars are charming, and the reason why there's so much debate, and the reason why guitarists like talking about guitars is because of the differences. Some people enjoy the differences, some people do not enjoy the differences. It's a completely personal perspective and take because everyone's hands are different, everyone has slightly different quirks to their playing, different body shapes and different ways they hold the guitar. So that is why there's always so much debate when, it, when there is guitars, uh, rightfully so. Going back to Dean's, they have not released their product catalogue for the year. I think Dean still makes some fantastic guitars, spec-wise. They're just not products that I would personally buy, which is a bit of a shame and kind of sucks for Dean guitars because if they want to thrive, they need customers' money. I'm going to, I'm going to give my money to someone who's selling a used Dean because those used Deans are the kind of Deans that I'm looking for. They've got the look, they've got the features, and again, price is another big thing. So if Dean want my money, they need to make a V or an ML seven string with 24 frets and a Floyd, and I can guarantee that they will get a lot of sales from that because they need to worry about Solar and the X-Type. Now that could take the Dean ML's market share, but again, that's a completely different matter, but it's something for Dean to be worried about. Going back to Dean guitars and the playability, they have just been the most solid guitars. They've hardly ever gone wrong. I've never had many frustrations with them. The only frustrations I've had is with some of the guitars with tunematic bridges because the tuning is not as pristine as the guitars with the Floyd Roses, which is understandable. Now, the big question is, would I be interested in other Jackson products? And the short answer is no. And why is that? 
Jackson's don't play as nice as Dean's. I don't care about the Jackson's features, it could be better, but as guitars they do not play as nice as Dean's. And it sucks that it's been so long without playing a Dean guitar. The last time I played a Dean guitar was at a guitar shop called Guitar Muse, which is in Seoul. They had a custom shop Dean from the Korean factory, and that's still one of the nicest Deans I've ever played, because it had the V-shaped body, a Floyd Rose, and it had a neck which had the wooden feel. You don't get that from other Deans. And that guitar was unbelievable. And I was very, very, very tempted to buy it. It's just I didn't have a Korean bank account set up at the time. That may have persuaded me to get the guitar. So I thought I'd make this video anyway, just sharing my thoughts and opinions and where I am with Jackson guitars and Dean guitars since moving and being away from all my equipment. Going back to the Jackson, I will never get rid of this guitar purely because it's gone on the journey and it's a guitar that I can rely on if the worst happens. It's been very, very dependable even though it's got its flaws. The way I feel about this guitar is similar to the relationship between Frodo and Boromir in the Lord of the Rings movies. Because Boromir annoys Frodo and Frodo annoys Boromir, there are moments where they work together nicely and there are moments where it's just like, no. But there will be a big disappointment if this guitar dies. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I don't really do these talking videos very much, but I thought I'd share this with you anyway. And on closing thoughts, Dean guitars still make the best guitars. They still are the best playing guitars. I miss my guitars dearly. Do check out Dean guitars. If there's one in a shop, just play it. If your friend has one, just play it. If you don't like them, that's fine. Then play your normal guitars. You're, you're always welcome to your opinion. And having an opinion is fine. 